Well, very simply, there had been a proposal to list Masood Azhar as a global terrorist. In fact, uh, this was the, uh, probably the fourth or fifth time that India and its allies had been trying to list him as a global terrorist. But on all the occasions, China had blocked this uh, effort to list him as a global terrorist. And now what has happened is that China has today lifted the hold it had placed on these efforts to list the jaish e mohammed chief as a global terrorist. And so the UN's 1267 Sanctions Committee has gone ahead with the designation of Masood Azhar as a global terrorist. Well, you know, just a uh, little bit of background, uh, uh, Masood Azhar's group, jaish e Muhammad, was already blacklisted by the UN uh, Sanctions Committee. Now, this is a specific, this entails a specific set of procedures that, uh, you know, Pakistan will have to uh, uh, implement. But it's not very substantial. What it means is that there will be a travel ban on Masood Azhar. He will not be allowed to travel out of Pakistan. There will be a freeze on his assets within Pakistan. And there will be uh, steps will have to be taken by Pakistan to ensure that he does not have access to weapons. So these are the three main uh, things that Pakistan will have to do uh, with regard to the designation of Masood Azhar as a global terrorist. Well, you know, the UN uh, 1267 Sanctions Committee has some very stringent measures uh, that it applies to individuals like Masood Azhar once they've been listed. But the problem, of course, is that Masood Azhar is based in a country like Pakistan, which has, you know, whose, whose military has for decades uh, allowed terrorist groups and militants like Masood Azhar to operate freely. Uh, so, you know, if you look back at the past, even somebody like Hafiz Saeed, the founder of lashkar e Taiba, uh, is under the same sanctions under the UN. But, you know, that hasn't stopped the lashkar e Taiba from functioning and its uh, sister organizations like Jamaat ud dawa or Falai and Saniyat Foundation from going ahead and raising funds and, you know, recruiting terrorists. So in the same way, uh, it all depends on Pakistan, you know, whether Pakistan will strictly, uh, you know, implement these sanctions and crack down on terrorists as it's been promising, but which we haven't seen happening so far. Well, you know, for a long time, you know, I mean, first of all, China and Pakistan have very strong traditional relations. They have always supported each other at uh, international forums. Uh, for a long time, China has, you know, as a permanent member of the, of the UN Security Council, it has a veto and it has used its, uh, its powers to block the sanctioning of Masood Azhar at the 1267 Sanctions Committee. Uh, this has been largely been done because of the good relationship between China and Pakistan. But I think there is now a growing realization in Beijing too that you know it, it is quite embarrassing to have to support somebody like Masood Azhar, who has you know been blamed for a string of terrorist attacks, not just in India but also in Afghanistan. I mean his name has been linked to the attack on Parliament, India's Parliament, on the Pathan Court uh, airbase attack and most recently in the Pulwama suicide attack. Well, you know, I mean, the current BJP government has always been very strong on national security issues. It's something that their leaders have not shied away from using on the campaign trail. They have raised it time and again. I mean, everybody from the Prime Minister on downwards, they have talked about how important it is to crack down on terrorism. It's, uh, it's one of the key issues in their campaigning. They have also talked about how they have been able to, you know, uh, take on terrorism emanating from Pakistan. So obviously this is a big diplomatic victory for India and also for the Indian government. And the Indian government is now, uh, I mean, as of now, it's still the BJP. So I'm sure this is something that the BJP leaders will capitalize on in their campaigning. Well, you know, I mean, uh, in the last few uh, months, uh, I mean, especially since last year, ever since Pakistan has faced enormous pressure from the US, from the UN, from uh, other Western countries, and from bodies such as the Financial Action Task Force, which looks at, you know, the financing of terrorist groups. Uh, because of these pressures, you know, the, the new government under Imran Khan has had to take some steps 
to at least you know send out the message that it's uh, cracking down on terrorists. I mean, we've after the Pulwama attack, we've had some reports of some Jaish e Mohammed facilities being taken over, some members of the Jaish e Mohammed being placed under detention. But you know, Pakistan has done things like this in the past and then rolled them back. So you know, what remains to be seen is whether the action taken by Pakistan will be sustained, will whether it will be irreversible, as India has been saying, as the U.S. has been saying. Only then, if it is sustained and irreversible, will there really be a change in the dynamics.